e-mobility is not anymore uh, a niche for Tesla and some exceptions. So Francois, automotive sector transformation, is this something which is really only relevant for developed countries, do you think? Well, let's have a look at the figures first. Talking about production, uh, if we look at tendencies uh, in Asia, um, I think t 15 years ago, Asia was producing 20% of the cars and vehicles worldwide. Today, we are close to 45. If we are talking about, especially China is even bigger, the figures. Now, talking about sales and growth, uh, we also see that um, prob probably in 2030, 50% of the cars will be sold in Asia. So, uh, talking about the old developed countries, and the automotive sector is missing something. So the next place to be for the automotive sector will be uh, even Africa. If you have a look at what is happening now on the market, there is a gap between vehicles uh, of a given brand in developed countries and in low and middle income countries uh, in terms of uh, safety feature, for example. So countries also are um, really trying to make progress and not only developed countries but also low and middle income countries. Okay, now you're talking about in, um, improving safety, but what about e-mobility? Is this something which is being taken seriously just at the minute? Well, yes, uh, e-mobility is not anymore uh, a niche for Tesla and some exceptions. Uh, just to give you one figure, uh, we expect more than 200 hybrid vehicles and electric vehicles uh, launch uh, within the next two or three years. It's really huge. And if you look also at the activities uh, by the countries, member state politicians, they are really making regulations to accompany also the development of e-mobility. At the UN, we develop technical regulations for e-bikes or motorcycles. Uh, we, for the safety of motorcycles uh, powered by electricity, we do regulations for um, uh, vehicles powered with hydrogen having an electric engine and if you look at the development even Toyota now is bringing uh, such vehicle powered by hydrogen for electricity the vehicle is called Murai Murai means future in uh, so you see mm. uh, e-mobility is the future uh, even for big manufacturers and traditional manufacturers certainly does seem to be an interest and a fast moving um, transition but something else which is quite interesting is the idea of the driverless car um, IT gurus are saying that it could drive your business change in life completely basically but is it just a fantasy well this is not just have a look at what is happening right now every manufacturer is working hard on that uh, it's not only tesla doing an autopilot or google driving in california mercedes-benz is involved french manufacturers peugeot is involved many manufacturers are involved um, yes this is the future of the automotive sector. This will address things like road safety again. Uh, this will address things related to uh, congestion. Um, this will be something for the smart mobility in smart cities. It's important. Just to make you realize how important this is, uh, I think in September, during the motor show in, in, in Frankfurt, the G7 transport ministers met together and talked about this subject and they, didn't, they, uh, they, they did even a declaration. If you have a look at, Dav at Davos, for example, in Davos, uh, they were also talking about the fourth industrial revolution based on the automation connectivity and the sector uh, which is in this fourth uh, industrial revolution is actually the automotive sector. Uh, it's a big thing. It certainly does seem to be something which is getting a, a lot of airtime at present. But you've spoken about the future and things that we have to look forward to. But what if we talk about some of the short term challenges? Now, major car companies, some of the big names which you have mentioned, have been in the news for other not so positive reasons. For example, callbacks. Um, you know, we can say that Chrysler, GM, Fiat have been definitely at the, the, the got a lot of media attention for that. And also in terms of the huge emission scandal of last year. Some companies seem to be kind of finding it difficult to comply with the regulations or the different standards which are in place. Do you think this is a, a bigger problem or is it just a kind of series of isolated incidents? Well, I think um, the automotive sector is very well regulated. And indeed, sometimes uh, if this is well regulated, there are rules that you don't comply with. 
There are other sectors uh, not having so much regulation, so they are doing things that you wouldn't really uh, like but they are not uh, doing anything against the rules because there are not so many rules. In the case of the automotive sector, there are rules and sometimes there are some difficulties, but this is the reason why we, we are having rules and we ask them to comply, to, to make sure that the products are safe and environmentally friendly. I think if that's something I've heard before, that callbacks aren't necessarily a negative thing. It means that they're checking that they want to improve and make small mi minor changes to make your car safer. Exactly. Recalls uh, you were talking about earlier are uh, to make the vehicle safer, to so make sure that they are complying with the highest level of saf safety and therefore they are safer, yes. Now you were also talking about emissions. Well, emissions was uh, a negative aspect and this is a challenge right now for the automotive industry, even though I'm quite sure that the engineers will manage to comply. But indeed, uh, the system was based on a quite old test cycle and uh, for the last seven years we worked on the uh, more stringent test cycle. This is called WLTP for the experts. Mm -hmm. uh, and even in the EU, people are working on the RDE, real dr driving emissions. Uh, which is going to be very stringent. It's going to be a challenge for the automotive sector, but they will manage to comply. And this will make the cars also m having a better performance for the environment on the streets. But right now we are facing a discussion. Some people are trying to check what, are th what we're doing, the technical experts, politicians are checking the, t the work of technical experts and uh, they are questioning. And I hope that these questions is not going to delay completely the work that was done by five years or so, this would be a big catastrophe for the environment. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing your expert opinion with us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. OK, well, that's all from Francois and myself, but there's plenty more coming on Ducascopy TV, so don't go anywhere. Bye for now.